What's your name? Haskell Hack Ayers. I live in uh, La Follette, Tennessee. It's 30 miles north of Knoxville. I was born in Stinking Creek, Tennessee, which is 10 miles north of La Follette. My dad said there's two occupations at Stinking Creek, moonshining and coal mining. He said he'd moonshine and he died before he went back to that coal mine again. Now, you, your father did get killed in a whiskey raid, right? Mm -hmm. Reve Revenue officers killed him. So my grandpa died in a coal mine camp. Well. <laughs> so we have something in common in a weird way. Uh, you know, he went back in uh, to get his lunch bucket and they knocked a pillar oh, out and it crashed him. All right, so anyway, let's talk about you. You, you were telling me a little bit about your, uh, your family history of, of working in uh, the hospitality industry or the, the hotel yeah. industry. Why whenever, don't you tell me about that a little bit? Whenever we moved from Stinking Creek to uh, La Follette, my dad bought a little tourist court. I had a restaurant and uh, 10 units, and uh, we had it three weeks and he gets killed. And um, we're still old for the thing. My mother, bless her heart, she became the cook. My sister became the waitress, and I was renting the rooms. We did that until we got the thing paid off several years later. By the time we got it paid off, I 75 bypasses, and we didn't have any business. So we went down to Lake City, Tennessee, which is 10 miles south, and built a little motel. And uh, Color TVs were just coming into the hotel business at that time. We had our, our marquee free color TV. We lost three color TVs the first night because they were free. And uh, we, uh, we we have built five hotels uh, in my lifetime. We built uh, Hampton Inn Suites in uh, Fort Myers, Florida. Uh, we had uh, hotels around. But we're back to, we have a Hampton Inn in Careville, Tennessee, which is 10 miles south of La Folly. So that brings me to a good question. Because there's a lot of people that want to get in the auction business, and a lot of people who are going to be watching this are, are uh, on freeonlineauctionschool.com. Think that what you do is you just quit your day job and you get into auctions. And my experience has been the opposite, that the people who are successful quite often, yourself, uh, I know auctioneers that have printing businesses. I know auctioneers that do real estate. What would your advice be about maybe having your irons in a couple different fires versus just betting everything on one? Do that. We've, uh, we were in the hotel business, still in the hotel business today. We have a Hampton Inn. And, uh, then uh, at the same time in the hotel business, well, uh, I've, been, I've been in different business. I did a contract. We had a boat factory there in La Follette, and I contracted to deliver the boats all over the country with that. Well, they had that. And uh, then I had the bargain bar. That was really where we got started. The, uh, the radio, Benny, Benny uh, Jones was the radio announcer, and we paid him $50 every Friday night to do our little uh, uh, pots and pans auction. One night he got drunk, didn't show up, and so my partner, he said, hop up there, you got five, let's go. So then I went to auction school, which was the best thing I ever did uh, at all. And uh, just whatever you can get into, you know, uh, make things roll, just roll with it. And, well, it sounds like you had kind of a, an entrepreneurial upbringing and an entrepreneurial uh, bent about you from the beginning, because if you're... You're making, and, and let's just say, uh, I would call it plan B thinking. You know, you you build a hotel, it's working fine. Then they move the highway. A lot of people would have gave up. But instead, you guys regrouped. Expanded. You expanded. I yep. like that. So it, it isn't like, wait for it to happen. You made it happen. You figured really? out, hey, the, the, the plan has changed. Let's That's come right. up with plan B, C, D. What are we going to do next? Nothing's going to stay the same. So, would you say that in the auction world you've seen a lot of change over oh, your yeah. years? Yeah, I've uh, uh, In fact, you wouldn't seen it where we're at right now. You wouldn't have saw that 35, 40 years ago. What's that? Oh, where? The contest and things like that going on. Okay. It's all new. So, uh, so, we used to say when I was in the Army, adapt, improvise, overcome, complete yeah. the mission. Right. All right. So, and it sounds like, it sounds like that might be a something that you guys oh, have, yeah. have done over yeah, the years. We've, uh, we've changed occupations to <laughs> several times. And I was in politics for eight years. And uh, I told my mother, I said, Mom, I'm going to run the state for a county court clerk. She said, son, they'll throw your dad up to you about being a moonshiner. I said, so be. 
So they introduced me, a big round of applause at town, died down. The guy, he said, Dollar, he said, Well, your father a moonshiner? I said, Oh, yes, a very effective moonshiner. And I want to be a very effective county court clerk. I ran seven races, and it's the only time it was ever mentioned. <laughs> I just passed up to it on the front end yeah. and, and went with it. And uh, I was county court clerk and state representative for two terms. And, uh, I loved that job, but mm. had uh, too much going on back in the house. Now, would you say that that helped the business oh, yeah. or hurt the business? It helped. Uh, well, see, I, everybody didn't know me at all, but you got some signs up all over the county. You know, they get to know you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I've always felt uh, great that people do know me. That's cool. Now, I've been told, and let's just, let's just let's set this up a little bit. I think it's really important to have good ring persons at an auction when you're doing a live auction I think they're invaluable okay. and and I've heard that uh, there was an interesting story regarding your wife and her ringing prowess uh, helping pull in the biz and the sale of a certain firearm why don't you tell us that story oh yeah Tommy if we were having a, a, a real estate auction if she didn't have the buyer she would have the next two of the buyer <laughs> as a ring person but uh, that particular sale, the Saturday before we sold it in the state, and uh, the guy, he just, he, he, he lost it. He, he took his medication and everything, and after that sale, he came, he said, I'm going to kill you, and that got my attention. So the next Saturday, we were selling another estate, and out of that, I learned one thing. If you're selling a pistol, don't ever sell the shock or the shields with it, you know, <laughs> it's Tuesday. And uh, Tommy, my wife, she was taking bids from him whenever I looked around, and I said, ooh. So I had a bidder in the front, so I quickly sold him to my bidder. She said, no, my bidder's in. I said, no, it wasn't, you know. But uh, after that, he got back on his medicine. He helped us that day. He was he was a great person, but for a slang around the scene, he's going to buy that pistol. That didn't sit well with me at all. So let's, let's assume now for a minute that you've got the opportunity. Let's, let's say that uh, over the years, we build up a little more of a base on this this website here that you're you're going to be on, and there's going to be folks who are just getting into the auction business. There's going to be folks who are looking to to get those clients. You've done a great job doing this. You built a very successful business. Why don't you tell them three or four things that they might not think about? Maybe it just seems bizarre, or maybe to you it's. Okay, let's put it this way. If if you were grew up as Superman and you were Superboy, it's no big deal to fly because you've been flying your whole life, okay? Now, you've been flying so long as an auctioneer that I want you to think about it for a second. There's, there's something that you've got that's a superpower in the auction business. Everybody that's around you knows it, uh, but you're humble and you're not going to tell somebody unless some little smart aleck like me comes up and makes you say it on a camera. <laughs> What was it? What was that certain thing that you you would say, or those three or four things? Give me some advice that I can pass on to these other people. I guess when I was 12 years old, I attended an auction there at home. It was a uh, hardware. And I was just amazed at, uh, at the auctioneer, what all he was doing there. And I guess at that point, I decided I want, that's what I want to be. And it was several years later. There never was an auction. This guy here, he, he wasn't a, a, a license or anything. He was just off the street guy. But we uh, we went to auction school and I got back, the guy that owned a, a furniture store there, he pulled up beside me, he said, Hack, he said, we're needing to liquidate dad's furniture store. And do you have do you know how to do that? And I said, man, I've been in training for that. That's what they trained me to do. You're talking to the man that can do it actually. So it was an old furniture store and they had some old furniture there. We had a sale on Saturday afternoon and Saturday night. Well, the next Saturday, the same way. It took two Saturdays to liquidate the store. But it just worked out. The old furniture brought new prices, and everybody was amazed what, what the auction did. So right after that, a banker and another guy had bought a farm down there below Jacksboro, and they said, hey, we bought that farm, we don't know what to do with it, and we'll take you in as a partner if you'll, if you'll develop it. And I said, well, we'll do that. So, uh, um, oh, you can think of the subdivision name. But anyway, 116 lots we put in there. Gave away a new Ford car the day of the sale. Had a terrific crowd. I mean, it's... Now, wait a minute. 
You developed a lot. I've heard about this from your daughter. And you gave away, as an incentive to draw people in, a brand new car. car. I bet that worked pretty well. Did it several times, <laughs> but uh, uh, eventually uh, your buyers get them, gets immune to that. So you give away a new truck, so what? <laughs> but I guess we give away eight or ten cars. And uh, every time we uh, do a subdivision, we developed a, over a hundred subdivisions within the Pine County area there. And it wouldn't work today, but it worked then because nobody else were doing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was amazed at people. What was the best? What was your first auction sale? Yeah, mine was three hundred and thirty-six dollars. That wasn't much. It was a big sale for me, you know. Yeah, and I bet you learned something yeah. from it that you applied yeah. to the next right. one. So, so, I was talking to your daughter, and she told me that when you did this, this, uh, some of these sales, you would do land contracts on yeah. it, hold the note, and then people. You basically were the bank. Why don't people, you talk about that a little bit? People wouldn't, wouldn't let you sell for them. And so we'd negotiate and we'd buy it from them on time. We'd maybe pay them $10,000 down on a $100,000 sale. And uh, then we'd have the auction sale and sell for $100 down. At that time, the bank just wouldn't loan anything on a vacant lot. But we were selling all of our lots $100 down, 6% interest, and we carry the note approved. And, um, they all pay that. You have you have a release clause in your contract. If a man want to pay cash, you can really release them out, and uh, it worked worked great. So let me make sure that I understand that because I think I do, and I want to make sure people who watch us understand what you just said because you made that sound so simple that I think that it might get past people. Let me see if I can say it back. So you have a bank. And they want to sell a piece of property. No, you, don't, you don't have a bank. And there is you no bank. You bypass the bank. Oh, okay. You so somebody you know, has a piece of property, property that's in a bank. good location that, that they, could they be become, developed. They become the bank because they're right. going to carry the note. So you are buying it from Joe Blow. Yeah. Let's call Joe. Uh, Joe's the owner. He's got this piece of property. He comes to you to help sell it. You're going to have Joe hold the note for you. You're going to subdivide it out into smaller parcels, mm -hmm. maybe 100, I think right. you said. Now you're going to hold the note for the people who buy it from you. Meanwhile, you're paying Joe for yeah. it. He's, you're holding, holding it. he's holding the note on me. And uh, well, this General Steiner, we just sold his mother's farm just recently. He called me one day. It's been 30 years ago. He said, "Hey, Mom wants to come up and have dinner with us uh, Saturday." I said, "Well, I'll be there for that." Get up there, and I said, "Well, what's the deal? It's just a family reunion here, and I'm the only outsider here." And he's well. We brought you up to sell you the farm. He said, Carl, the general, and his, his brother, they were both going back to Vietnam for their second, uh, second tour. And they were wanting to get their mother and dad out of the holler over on the main highway. And uh, 150 acres, they wanted 150,000. That's why everything's fine, except they only have the 150,000. I said, let's go down. How much is it going to cost to get you on the highway? $40,000. I said, well, let's go down and borrow 40,000 on this farm. Then I'll give you a second mortgage for the rest of it. As I sell it off, I pay both of those off. That $40,000 that they bought back then, of course, they built a house on about $560,000 three weeks ago. But uh, you can just do numbers. You, you can take numbers and make it any, any place. That, I thought that was a brilliant story. And, and just so people know that are listening to this, the guy he's talking about is, is a four-star general, yeah. Carl Steiner. He was the chairman of the Joint Special Forces Command, as far as, uh, and a co-author of a book, Shadow Warriors, with Tom Clancy. So this is not some insignificant, uh, I was a private in the Army fellow, this is the guy that ran all the special forces for all the services. The Navy SEALs were under him. The uh, Army Rangers were under him. The Air Force PJs and special ops planes were under him. This is uh, the Marine Recon were under him. He was in charge of all the Joint Special Forces. And That's a pretty cool person to know. To meet and talk to him, you think he's just an average Joe. Oh, yeah. Of oh, course, yeah. he knows it all. 
Yeah, and he's not talking about it. You know, you get somebody like me blabbing his mouth because yeah. I was a sergeant. Your your daughter put me straight on that. Uh, and, and she, I know that she knew what she was doing. I don't know if she knew that I knew what she was doing, but it was like, oh, you were in the Army? I have a friend that was in the Army. Oh, what he do? Oh, his name's Carl Steiner. Like, what? <laughs> you know, four-star general? Are you kidding me? Okay, I'm done talking then. There's All a right. Friend, a friend of mine, uh, just the same story just about, saw me, he said, uh, he's in the service. I said, well, we have a, a uh, friend of ours in the service in Lafayette. What, General Carl, what? General Carl Steiner? Oh, yeah. And like you say, he quit bragging, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my stories were done. I didn't have any more Army stories left after that. But I tell people it's funny. I'll say, you know, if I go to a regular party of normal people and I tell a story about finding a grenade, I win. It's over. There's no contest. If you go here and you tell a story to an auctioneer about finding a grenade, I did, you know, uh, Kurt Allman found two. This person over here, they, they had a, a whole warehouse full of stuff. My you know, daughter, it's like, oh, yeah, well, I found a nuclear bomb. You know, well, mine was hydrogen. My you know? daughter felt one in the auction cell we were having. Yeah. yeah. And you have to be careful because you and they always say, well, I used to play with that. It's like, how are you alive? They if you'd have pulled the pen, you'd have been blown the, bit uh, to bit. Federal, whatever, they came out and stopped the auction sale, roped everything off, and wouldn't let us sell you there. Either. Yeah. But when I called, I called the... Uh, police i said well the guy who found it worked for me and he was a young man he was i was a scout i was his cub master i was a scout master he was an eagle scout but by this time he's six foot four he's a big dude he's got his <laughs> beard mr wyman i think i found a grenade i looked at it and it didn't have any hole in the bottom and i said aaron i think you did why don't you hand that to me very gently and back up so he hands it to me this thing's leaking nitroglycerin i sat it on the table and then i took pictures then i called the police well the police came and they, you know, got on their phone. And, yeah, I think it's real. And next thing, the sergeant's there. He calls up, and we got we got the chief of police. Next thing I know, they're calling the ATF, and uh, uh, the bomb squad guys show up. They weren't friendly at all. They see uh, it's a grenade. They kick us out of the house. Then they have to search the house. That's when they found the cannonballs. Oh. And they're like, now they evacuate the whole street. Uh, the guy had a bomb fuse. I didn't know what the heck it was. It looked like a green ice cream cone. I'm playing with it. I don't know how I didn't blow myself up. It goes on the, on the front of a bomb. Anyway, let's get back and talk about you. We're, we're right next to Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Oh, boy. Where they built the atomic bomb. Yeah. 70,000 people working there in 1941. Nobody knew what they were doing. And uh, been a real boom for our area. Mm-hmm. So let's see. Uh... You've been in the NAA now how long? Oh, let's see, since 60, uh, 62, I believe. Whatever since I Moby Dick was a guppy. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so how beneficial have you found being in the National Auctioneers Association has been to, to your career? And what advice would you give people who are on the fence about thinking that, well, gee, that seems like a lot of money to, to join that and maybe go well, to that conference? If you're going to be in this business, you're going to spend a lot of money. I mean, you can't be a spendthrift and, and not invest in it. And uh, I tried to attend as many of the seminars as I could because every time I did, I, I learned something new. And uh, if they're going to get in the auction business, you're going to have to get in. And if you're not, you stay out. There's no line there to cross. I mean, get in it and, uh, and, and be with it. Have you seen a lot of people get in and want to play in the shallow end and not oh, want yeah, to get yeah. involved? And yeah. Are they still in or are they going? No, you don't see or hear or tell them anymore. Mm -hmm. That seemed to be my experience, but I haven't been doing this as long as you have, so I've got to <laughs> ask. Now let's talk about the friendships you've made. Do you, do you find yourself in this weird position where some of your best friends don't live anywhere near you? You've got friends all across the United States in this business. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've, I've had some made dear friends uh, in this business and uh, uh, we have the hotel there and, and we get friends stops in just coming and going all the time. Now I bet you could jump in your car and drive to Montana from eastern Tennessee and I'll bet you that you could find a place to stay with a good friend that's going to treat you like a king almost anywhere you go between here and Montana, and a place to stay in Montana. Whenever, Am I wrong? Whenever I was traveling for NAA, I went to Montana to do a, for the Montana Officer Association. I was staying at the hotel, and I forget the name of the town, right in the middle of Montana, and I get paged while I'm having dinner, and uh, that was before um, cell phones or anything. 
And uh, I went and called and she, said, she said, Hack, she said, my name's Ayers. I'm from Chesky, and that's up in the mountains from where I was raised. And so I saw in the paper where you were going to be here. And I haven't talked to nobody from home. And for my husband to retire Air Force, and he wanted to retire next to a, a base here where he could get medical treatment. I guess she talked to me an hour just about all the folks back home. Mm -hmm. But I enjoyed it. Do you have auctioneers that get mad if, if you come through their area and you don't call them? You no. Know? No, no, they really, they're, they're grateful, I guess. But, <laughs> but we, uh, uh, we stay in, in, in contact with them. You admit them. So I ask this question usually at the end. I don't want to keep you all down. I know you got good friends you want to see. What didn't I ask you that I should have asked you? What, what question would you love to just, if there's something that you'd like to tell everybody, what, what is that thing I forgot to ask you? Uh, really, I don't know. <laughs> you covered it pretty, pretty well. The auction business is, is a family business, I think. A lot of people are not family in the auction. But it's, it's his, his has helped our family to, together. Even the in -law, son laws coming in, they just join in. Now they're just part of the auction crowd. Uh, I didn't think of our company could ever have an auction sale if I wasn't there. But now my kids and son-in-laws, they'll have two or three auction sales while I'm out somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And they're still doing an excellent job. And uh, it's just, uh, it's just a, a business that you mix with people. Like this guy coming out here from Clinton, Tennessee, Barry Stevenson. I don't think I know him. He said, if you came up here, be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Come on over. We're just friends here. Yeah. No problem. We'll put you on the real deal. I didn't think you were coming this year. Here we are. We got yeah. it last out about midnight. I see that. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Deal. Jason, where are you from? Clinton. Oh, man, two here from Clinton. Yeah, Jason, originally, he retired out of the Army. Oh, I met Mr. Jesse. Yeah. He does a personal property yeah, sale. He's just personal yeah, property. he takes all the money. That's right. Yeah, that, you got that yeah. right. You yeah. retired out of the Army. What, what uh, MOS? I was 11 Alpha. Infantry yeah. officer. What's that again? Infantry officer. Infantry officer. Okay. I, I was uh, 31 Sierra, so I don't okay. think they have it anymore. I was crypto rich. It's, it's just 31 uniform now. They're all 31 uniforms. They're all together? Yeah. All right, I'm going to shut this off. Well, thank you for spending all